Welcome back to Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jeremy Lapidus. If you're just tuning in, we just finished going over my NCAA Top 25 list. If you want to go and check that out, it'll be posted on YouTube, or you can go a little further back in this video. In this segment here, we are going to get into a power ranking for the NFL. We'll get one through six or 30 through, through 32 through 17 and then 16 to 1 to close out the show but before we get into that remember if you would like to be an even bigger part of the show than you already are all you need to do is go to gsmcpodcast.net leave a tip or donation with a message in it that message should pop up on the bottom of the screen for you me and everybody else around the world to see if you're on youtube you can use that super chat feature if you do either of those two things again that message should pop up I appreciate anything you guys do give. If you have a burning question about sports, go ahead and throw that in the comments. Throw it in the chat. I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. Thanks for taking time out of your Labor Day to talk some sports with me. But like I was saying, we are going to get into the NFL power rankings. First time preseason power rankings. It's been a bit. We usually do our MLB of this, but we're on to the NFL. Every single Monday, we'll have new MLB power, or new NFL power rankings. This is the preseason one as the season starts on Thursday. We had our first injury report. The only uh, the only one that's on there is Hollywood Brown right now, but we'll get into all of that later. Sitting at the 32 spot in the NFL power rankings are the New England Patriots. The Patriots are just a mess of a team right now. They traded away some of their best defensive talent. Some of their other great defensive talent is out indefinitely with blood clots. The quarterback situation is a mess. The offensive line might be the worst in football. The wide receiver core also might be the worst in football. They're just not in a good spot. The Patriots sit at number 32 on the list. At 31, we have Bryce Young and the Panthers. Now, I do believe in Bryce Young this year. I think he's a guy that this is a make-it-or-break-it year for him. We did a top five list of that about a month ago, if I had to guess. He was, I think, number three on that list for me. Bryce Young is a guy that needs to show up and show out. They went out, they got him weapons. They off, they upgraded the offensive line a little bit. The defense, I'm still worried about. This is not a great team, but it is an improved team. They're better than the Patriots, I think, this season. They start off at 31. At 30, we have the Denver Denver Broncos. They're also going through a, through a transitional period. Uh, they have to deal with the contract of Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson, who... They owe $85 million in dead cap to, not on the team anymore, currently the starter for the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Broncos are in a miss. Bo Nix is a guy that looked solid in the preseason. I'm not sold on him, though. Offensive line is fine. You've got fine weapons. The defense is going to be a whole nother discussion. The defense is a mess. The defense is not going to be easy to fix. Outside of... uh, of, uh, you know, Pat Sertan, there's no one on that defense that I trust or think is uh, is going to be on that team much longer. They lost a lot of their key guys. The Broncos slide in at number 30. At 29, we have the New York Giants. The Giants are here because of their quarterback situation. Daniel Jones is not enough to carry Devin Singletary, you know, and the rest of that offense. You have Malik Neighbors, a solid so, a really solid uh, player gets a number unretired, gets number one unretired, which was the first number the Giants ever retired. That's an interesting discussion right there on its own, but they clearly believe in him. He's going to be good. The defense, I think, will be solid. You have one of the more formidable defensive lines in all of football. Dexter Lawrence, Kayvon Thibodeau, Aziz uh, Ojolari. You know, this, this, is, this is a really good uh, defensive line. The corner... Corner could use a little bit of depth there. Safeties, you're relying on some young guys. Linebackers, eh, up and down on there. But the defensive line is really good. So there are some positives here. They slot in at 29. At 28, I have the Tennessee Titans. And all of this, a lot of their season, all of their season really relies on the arm of Will Levis. Will Levis showed a lot of flashes, but he also showed a lot of he's not ready yet last year. He led a lot of really great drives. They went out, they got him weapons to pair with DeAndre Hopkins. <coughs> Excuse me. They brought in 
Calvin Ridley. They brought in Tyler Boyd. They let Derrick Henry go. They're making that transition to more of a passing team. They upgraded the offensive line. Lloyd Cushenberry comes in to play center. That is a great, great move. They also draft a tackle as well, right? This is a Titans team that did their best to protect Will Levis, bringing Tony Pollard, keeping Ty J Spears around. This is going to be a passing offense much more than it was when they had Brian, uh, when uh, Vrabel was coaching, Mike Vrabel was coaching. It's a, lo- it's a lot more of a passing offense. Now they slot into 28. At 27, we have the Raiders. And again, weird quarterback situation. I like Gardner Minshew just fine, but he's not going to blow the socks off of anyone. Maybe Aiden O'Connell comes in halfway through the season. It's a mess over there in Las Vegas. The Raiders are at spot 27. At 26, we have the Vikings. They're a very talented team. Maybe the best receiver in football, Justin Jefferson. Some of the best talent to pair with Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, TJ Hawkinson when he gets healthy. I really like Aaron Jones. That offensive line is solid, but quarterback is Sam Darnold. And that in itself is a big enough problem. I don't really love the Vikings chances this year, but we've seen weird journeyman quarterbacks be good for the Vikings in the past. So maybe that changes. At 25, I have the Chargers. The Los Angeles Chargers are going through another state of change. They still have their quarterback, but Jim Harbaugh comes in. He is switching them to a run culture. We talk about the Titans switching to a pass culture. The Chargers are coming in and running the ball. They bring in two running backs from Baltimore, J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards. They shore up the offensive line, bring in a bunch of blocking tight ends, let all the wide receivers go. This is going to be an interesting team to watch because the defense is kind of a mess and they're going to play kind of chew clock a little bit as well with their offensive style. I'm not sure how that's going to go, but I don't think it's going to work this season. Maybe next year they'll really take that turn because Jim Harbaugh tends to win wherever he goes. Chargers are at 25. At 24, I have the Arizona Cardinals. The Cardinals are a team that I really like. I love their offense. Kyler Murray should be back for the whole season. You add Marvin Harrison Jr. You have Trey McBride. Greg Dortch is a solid weapon. You know, the offensive line could be better, but the defense is really what drags them down. They're going to have one of the worst defenses in the league. They'll win games because they have a dynamic offense, but the defense is really going to be an issue for the Cardinals this year. At 23, I have the Saints. And the Saints, I think, are kind of the epitome of an average team. Now, they're on the decline, but they just don't have anything that really stands out. What stands out on that team? Derek Carr? No. The wide receivers, Chris Olave is solid, but is he really going to stand out amongst the the top wide receivers in the league? Not, not really. You know, Alvin Kamara used to, but he, after what he did last season, is not at the top echelon of running backs anymore. The defense, eh, there's there's no one on there that I'm really excited for. I love the addition of Willie Gay, but that's not going to make their defense a top defense in the league. Marcus Davenport is still there. But again, there's nothing flashy about this team. This team is just a bunch of guys that are slightly over the hump, I believe. And the guys that aren't just aren't enough to really make a winning team. The Saints are sliding sliding in at number 23. At 22, we have the Washington Commanders. Jaden Daniels, I'm very excited to see. I think he's going to be really good for this team. The Commanders are youthful. They've got a lot of great weapons. I think the Commanders are going to be surprised a lot of people this year. They are at 22. At 21, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers. Quarterback, quarterback, quarterback. That's the question with them, right? We know they're going to have an elite defense. We know that their running backs are going to be solid. I just don't know what the quarterback situation is going to be, how it's going to play out. Right now it's Russell Wilson. I don't know how long that'll last. I don't know how he'll perform. I don't know if he'll be able to bounce back behind what has been a pretty bad offensive line, although it was revamped, so maybe they just needed more time to play with each other. We'll see what happens. The Steelers are at 21. At 20, we have the Seattle Seahawks. Seahawks have a new head coach, Mike McDonald. I love Mike McDonald. Geno Smith is a guy I like. 
DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett. They've got a lot of pieces I like. They're just not quite there. The defense needs a little bit of work. They up draft Byron Murphy in the first round should shore up the defensive line. The corners kind of got kind of fell off a cliff last year, though. We'll see if they can return to form. At 19, we have the Bucks. Baker Mayfield, if he can do what he does, this is a little low, but I think he's going to regress a little bit from last year. He just tends to regress after having people believe in him again. So he feel like he's a guy that needs that chip on his shoulder. Maybe, maybe, maybe the Bucks will be good. I just don't believe in them this year, honestly. At 18, we have the Jacksonville Jaguars. They collapsed at the end of last season, leaving a sour taste in everybody's mouth. Trevor Lawrence gets paid. The defense is in shambles, basically. Uh, especially the secondary is a mess over there for Jacksonville. But the offense, I think, should be good. They lose Calvin Ridley. They bring in Gabe Davis. That's a net negative, I think. But Trevor Lawrence should be healthy. And when healthy, Trevor Lawrence is a guy that has MVP potential. The Jaguars slide in at 18. Finishing off the first half of this list, at number 17, we have the Chicago Bears, led by Caleb Williams, the first overall pick, and the plethora of weapons that the Bears have put around him. That defense is going to be really solid, too. I love that defense. The Bears go as Caleb Williams goes this season. He'll be good. I just don't know if he's going to be ready this year. I don't know if he's going to really show up as much as he possibly can in his rookie season. It's a tough thing to do, but the Bears are at 17. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to go over the top 16, 16 to 1, break down the top teams in the NFL power rankings. So stick around for that. We'll be right back here on Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. 